Hello and welcome to Math Matters. I'm Ms. Granados and today we are going to be learning about the relationship between fractions and decimals so that we can recognize equivalent values. At the end of the lesson, you will know you have met today's learning intention if you are able to meet the following success criteria. I can take one form of a number and represent it in other forms, fraction to decimal and decimal to fraction. I can use models and or mathematical language to prove that two values are equivalent or not equivalent, and I can describe the relationship of the whole and its parts in the situation. You will need some paper and something to write with. Go ahead and gather your supplies. same and what is different about this image? Did you think to yourself that the top bar has no markings, but the bottom number line was labeled 0 and 1 as endpoints? Or maybe you thought that one half of the top bar is shaded in yellow and one half of the number line is marked with a yellow dot. How did you notate your thinking? Did you visualize the words one half in your head or did you write one half in fraction form? I wonder if anyone marked the number line with five tenths or 50 hundredths, both as fractions and decimals. The previous image made me think of distance. Runners pay attention to the distance that they run and their timing when they prepare for a race. Usually, runners run in metric distances, such as meters and kilometers. This bar represents the length that a runner plans on running to prepare for a race. Let's say that he is running along this track and his phone keeps going off. He tries to ignore the call, but it won't stop, so he stops to take the call. I'm going to place a star where he stopped to take the call. So if his goal was to run the entire length of the track, about how much of the track, or his goal, did he run? Will this number line help? It's numbered zero to one because the entire track length represents the whole. If I use the halfway mark from our previous slide as a benchmark, then I know that the star is at a distance greater than one half or five tenths of the track. Do you want to change your estimate of where this star is on the track? Well, now I think I want to break up this track into fourths. Now that the track is broken up into fourths, I can see that I'm getting closer to the point of the star. This part of the track that's highlighted pink is three-fourths of the track, or 75 hundredths. The star is a little greater than this value, so I want to partition the track into smaller pieces. I'm going to partition the track into tenths, and by doing this, I see that I have found a more exact point that hits the star. How many tenths did it take to get to the red mark? That's correct. It took seven tenths to get to the red mark. This runner ran seven tenths of the track when he stopped to take his phone call. We can mark 7 tenths as a fraction or as a decimal. Now let's think of this dollar bill as our whole. What fraction or decimal equivalent will each of these coins have? Well, let's start with the first coin on the left. This coin is called a half dollar. 
So what fraction and decimal would we write to represent the half dollar to one dollar? Well, we know that one dollar is equal to 100 pennies or 100 cents. So if I want to determine half of that, I can divide both sides by two and that gives me 50 cents. The fraction of half a dollar looks like this in number and word form. 50 hundredths represents the 50 cents out of 100 cents, and that is equivalent to one half. Four quarters are equivalent to a dollar. What fraction and decimal would we write to show the relationship of one quarter to one dollar. So we know that one dollar is equal to 100 pennies or 100 cents. So if I want to determine a quarter or one fourth of that, then I divide both sides by four and that gives me 25 cents. The fraction of this relationship looks like this in number and word form. 25 hundredths represents the 25 cents out of 100 cents, and that is equivalent to 1 fourth. Ten dimes are equivalent to a dollar. What fraction and decimal would we write to show the relationship of one dime to one dollar? Well, we know that $1 is equal to 100 pennies or 100 cents, and that 10 dimes equals a dollar. So then I just need to divide both sides by 10, and that gives me 10 cents. The fraction of this relationship looks like this in number and word form. 10 hundredths represents the 10 cents out of 100 cents, and that is equivalent to 1 tenth. 20 nickels are equivalent to a dollar. So what fraction and decimal would we write to show the relationship of one nickel to one dollar? Well, Again, we know that $1 is equal to 100 pennies or 100 cents, and that 20 nickels equals a dollar. So then I need to divide both sides by 20, and that gives me 5 cents. The fraction of this relationship looks like this in number and word form. 5 hundredths represents the 5 cents out of 100 cents, and that is equivalent to five hundredths or one twentieth. One hundred pennies are equivalent to one dollar. So what fraction and decimal would we write to show the relationship of one penny to one dollar? Well, again, we know that $1 is equal to 100 pennies or 100 cents. So we divide both sides by 100 and that gives us one cent. The fraction of this relationship looks like this in number and word form. One hundredth represents the one cent out of 100 cents. Changing to sports, when baseball players go to bat, their number of hits and number of times they are at bat are always recorded. Batting averages are determined by the total number of hits divided by the number of times the player goes to bat. So let's say that a player goes to bat a total of 200 times and actually hits the ball 43 times. 
the batting average fraction is 43 two hundredths. To determine the decimal equivalent, I can divide 43 by 200. I can also multiply 43 two hundredths by five fifths so that I can have a denominator of 1,000 or thousandths. This result this results in an equivalent value of 215 thousandths. The decimal is 215 thousandths. So to summarize, 43 two hundredths is the same as 215 thousandths as a fraction and as a decimal. So now it's your turn. What if a player has gone to bat 200 times, but he only hits the ball 17 times? What would his batting average be? Feel free to use the example we just went through to figure it out. Compare what you did with what's written up here. Great job. Let's move on to a different scenario. Here are different types of scales that you might see at a grocery store. These are close-up pictures of those scales. What do you notice and what do you wonder? I notice that the scale on the left is round and has fractional amounts with 16 marks in between each whole number. I know that there are 16 ounces in a pound, so the round scale is measuring the customary units, while the digital scale on the right is measuring in kilograms, which is metric. Also, I notice that the round customary scale is measuring counterclockwise, since the number one is to the left of the zero versus to the right. Finally, the customary scale is measuring in fractions and the digital scale on the right is measuring in decimals. I plan on baking an apple pie and I buy these apples at the store. On the customary scale, it reads four and one-fifth pounds. What would that look like as a decimal? Well, I plan on finding an equivalent fraction with tenths in the denominator because I know that decimals are read in tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. So in order to change to this new denominator, I need to multiply by two halves. That gives me an equivalent fraction to one fifth, which is two tenths. So four and one fifth is the same as four and two tenths. Is this the decimal that you thought of? I weighed these grapes using the digital kilogram scale, and it read 625 thousandths of a kilogram. Let's convert this amount to a fraction. 
what would you do first? Well, I would write the fraction conversion for how I read the decimal. 625 thousandths. I could leave my fraction like this, but I want to simplify it to find an equivalent value. I know that 25 is a factor of both 625 and 1000, so I'm going to divide both of these numbers by 25 25ths. And I know that there are four 25s in 100. And I have six hundreds. So six times four is 24, plus the one more 25 makes 25. I'm going to use that same idea of four 25s in 100 to help me with the 1000. I have 10 hundreds in 1,000, so I multiply 4 times 10 to get 40. So 25 fortieths can still be simplified further because 5 is a factor of both 25 and 40. So then I end up with 5 eighths. This tells me that 625 thousandths is actually the same as 5 eighths. So now let's reflect. Today we explored areas in real life when we use fractions and decimals. Whether we're thinking about distance, money, and or batting averages, we realize that people will use fractions and de decimals interchangeably. So it's important to understand the relationship that they have to one another and how to convert between the two. We will continue to focus on equivalent fractions and decimals in upcoming videos. Now that we've reviewed what we focused on in this lesson, write down something that you learned today. Maybe it's something that you learned with fraction and decimal equivalencies with the batting averages, or maybe with the money. Or maybe it was something you learned about yourself as a communicator. Is there anything you're still wondering? Maybe a question about finding an equivalent decimal for a specific fraction? If so, write that down. of the success criteria for today, use the number line to reflect on where you are in your understanding. If you feel like you understand the success criteria, then you will rate yourself on the number line towards the right arrow. If you feel like you kind of got it, then you might be somewhere in the middle of the number line. And if you feel like you still need more time to practice one of the success criteria, then you'll probably be closer to the left arrow on the number line. I can describe the relationship of the whole and its parts in the situation. I can use models and or mathematical language to prove that two values are equivalent or not equivalent. I can take one form of a number and represent it in other forms, fraction to decimal and decimal to fraction. In today's episode of Math Matters, we learned about the relationship between fractions and decimals and where we encounter them in our daily lives. Remember, if you still have a question about today's learning, then you can email your teacher, ask a friend or a family member. I'm Ms. Granados. I hope you have a great day and keep on counting.